Imagine for a moment being the parent of a little boy who grows and grows and grows, grow like a weed, grow like crazy, but he doesn't eat. You start to get worried about his weight because he just keeps getting taller, but he doesn't get any heavier. When you can get him to eat, he eats a little bit and he gets so unbearably full that he gets a tummy ache, he feels nauseous. He may even throw up periodically. And it's so hard because you can't figure out what's going on with your child, but your mom gut or your dad gut is telling you there's something more here. You've been to the pediatrician. You've been referred to GI. They've checked for diabetes. They've checked for reflux. And they check for, I mean, anything they can test for. Finally, feeling frustrated, heartbroken, helpless, you get a diagnosis of gastroparesis. Now what? This scenario walked into our doors last week. And as a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor, we were pretty far out on the list of places that these frustrated parents had tried to come up with answers for what's going on with their kiddo. But I tell you what, I was happy that they stopped by because this is something that we help and we help it a lot. So if you've had a similar experience, if you are studying, you're doing the Google and you're trying everything looking at gut health, if you're looking at supplementations and you're looking for different nutritional remedies, if you've changed your diet, if you have tons and tons of supplements and you've done blood panels, then the thing is, I can't recommend another diet. I can't recommend another probiotic because you are already an expert on all of these things. You've looked through them. You've read the reviews. You've gotten the test results. You've put together all of these different aspects. But if something's still not there, then we need to talk about the next level. And that's looking at the brain-gut connection and the way that the nervous system controls all of these processes. A common overlooked factor in cases like gastroparesis is the nervous system, specifically the autonomic nervous system, specifically, specifically, the parasympathetic part of the autonomic nervous system. Think of that as the rest, relax, regulate system, or if you want to be a little bit more informal, eat, sleep, poop. Now, the vagus nerve, which is part of this, is a very important part of the anatomy and therefore the physiology, and it plays a crucial part in regulating the immune system and reducing inflammation. When functioning properly, it is the main superhighway of that brain-gut connection. Let's dig in. I promise this is going to be an eye-opening experience to see how gastroparesis is connected to other struggles in your kid's experience. So first, to hammer out that definition, even though I know you've probably already looked it up. Gastroparesis. It's a rare condition where the stomach has the difficulty of emptying itself of food. As a result, this condition causes significant pain and discomfort for kids. Common indicators are things like difficulty finishing meals, abdominal bloating, pain, nausea, vomiting, and weight loss. Where it gets a little more complex is finding the root cause. And this is usually an area that brings on a ton of frustration for parents. Watching your child experience these symptoms is absolutely gut-wrenching. And unfortunately, the typical medical experience in looking at these symptoms is to treat them as a whole bunch of disconnected symptoms and giving a medication for each one. Now, these treatments are usually focused on the gut. And to be quite honest, gastroparesis itself, when looked at from this way, is very misunderstood, and while some success can be had, it's missing the whole picture. Oftentimes that referral to the gastroenterologist will result in things like medication, surgery, or even surgically implanted devices that stimulate the musculature of the stomach muscles. And to be honest, when you're looking at these three things as a whole, the results are mixed at best. One factor that I feel is not taken into account far enough is that gastroparesis can be the direct result of nerve injury specifically damage or irritation to the vagus nerve. As I said before, that vagus nerve, not Chevy Chase vagus, but V-A-G-U-S, is crucial in looking at the way that our immune system works and regulating inflammation. When it's functioning properly, the vagus nerve is going to stimulate the musculature of the stomach to contract and help move food throughout the digestive tract. Now, that's the really interesting thing when we're talking about musculature. We have three different types of musculature. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the smooth musculature, the viscera. You know, there's skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is the muscle that we can voluntarily control. So we go to the gym for it or pick up those dumbbells and get that nice sweet pump. But the smooth muscle that is lining the insides of our digestive system, we can't move that ourselves. We can't voluntarily move that ourselves, I should say. 
But our body does do it internally with that autonomic nervous system, and we don't even have to think about it. Which is probably a good thing, because if we had to think about regulating cell division, heart rate, breathing, all those things, and then throw digestion on top of it and motility, man, you think we have noisy brain now? Imagine what that would be like. But in cases of gastroparesis, this communication does not happen properly. The contraction of the smooth musculature of the digestive system does not happen in the way that it is supposed to. This limits the ability of food to empty from the stomach into the small intestines, which is going to cause both pain and discomfort. So, as a neurologically focused pediatric chiropractor, my number one goal is to look at that root cause of what's going on. To not look at it from the outside and say, how do we treat these five different symptoms with five different things that have a success rate of 15%? I'm just kidding. It may be higher than that. Who knows? But if we know that all five of these things that we're exhibiting are sharing a common root cause, then wouldn't it make sense to go after that root cause, to look at that brain gut connection and say, how can we optimize this? How can we reduce the irritation, interference, subluxation in this system to help that brain talk to the gut through the vagus nerve better? So that nerve, that vagus nerve that is talking to the smooth muscle of the stomach can send the neurotransmitter signals across the junction from the nerve to the muscle to contract in the specific way to push the food from the stomach into the small intestine. Yeah, we're going to look at that. And the thing is, while the gut is a very important part of that system, it's not the whole thing. When we're talking about it, it is the brain to gut connection that drives this, which makes me put on my monocle and my detective hat and say, hmm. Let's do some investigating. And a very common link that we see when we turn the clock back far enough is almost every single child that comes through with a digestive system or a gastroparesis issue had some sort of significant stress during the prenatal period or experienced birth intervention or birth trauma. Ultimately, these factors led to an injury and irritation to subluxation of that vagus nerve. And again, brain gut connection. That's the beginning. When we get this trauma causing stress on the nervous system, this leads to irritation, interference, subluxation, dysautonomia, and you throw it all together, and that's what we call that perfect storm. So what do we do? What are our actionable steps, and what does this process look like? How do we help these kids? Well, the first thing is getting an understanding of the entire history. We schedule a consultation with mom, dad, and the little one to deep dive into your child's case history, to go through the prenatal period, to talk about delivery, to talk about labor, to talk about those first couple hours of life and the time afterwards, looking at milestones and measuring objectively the function and the efficacy and the ability of their nervous system to work. Going through that deep history helps us to find the triggers and the root causes, and evaluating that nervous system with our insight scans will give us a definitive answer of number one, the address or the location of the major irritations or interferences in your child's system. And number two, it'll tell us the balance of that sympathetic, stress stuck on, go, 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 pedal to the metal, and the parasympathetic, rest, relax, regulate, eat, sleep, poop system. It'll tell us what they're doing, it'll tell us how they're playing, and it'll give us an overall greater efficiency. Essentially, you go buy a new car, advertises 40 miles a gallon, you get out in real life and it's only 20 miles a gallon, it's not very efficient. We can look at the function of the nervous system in a not exactly, but a similar way in saying that we are only 50, 70, or hey, we're 95% efficient here. The really cool thing with looking at the objective data is that we can track it over time and show progress. Our insight scans are safe. They emit no radiation. They are only reading data. They are not invasive. And the cool thing is they are reliable and they are accurate. Based on our case history and looking through the actual state of your child's system, we can put it together to build a customized care plan to help, number one, achieve your goals. Number two, get their nervous system back on track to take them from where they are, point A, to what you'd like and what your goals are and a good functioning nervous system for them, point B. Once your child sets off on their care plan with gentle adjustments that will help unwind this pent up, stressed out nervous system, the vagus nerve will begin to operate at its full potential. With the vagus nerve back online, your child's digestive tract will get back to doing what it's supposed to do, eat, sleep, poop. 
rest and digest. So many parents also tell us that they see improvements with their child's sleep, their energy levels, their ability to regulate their emotions, their sick less, and a host of other benefits that we see with neurologically focused chiropractic care. So if you've tried detox, if you've tried diet, if you have a stack of supplements and there's still just a little bit more that's not coming together, Look into that brain-gut connection. It's time to get the vagus nerve and the nervous system back on track. And the solution doesn't always have to be hard. It's easier than you think. Between looking at our insight scans to set a baseline for your child's nervous system, we can build and improve that. We put it together with that case history, get a good understanding to make a plan that is specific for your child. And that's how we get started. And what we find in many cases is this process makes all the difference in helping children to conquer gastroparesis and the other challenges they're facing. So please, if you have questions, shoot me a message, give me a call, send me a carry pigeon. I'm here, here to help. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to help your kiddos get back on track. I'll see you soon. Take care.